and Raiders. Welcome to our bucket carry workout. So today we are working on exercises that help us pick a bucket that weighs anywhere from 30 to 100 pounds off the floor up into a position where we can carry it and then carry it for around 400 meters, which is 1200 feet. It's a long amount of meters. So we'll be working lower body strength. We'll be working power from lower to upper. We'll be working upper body strength and we'll be getting a little bit of cardio in there. So you're gonna need dumbbells today. And we're also gonna have a, an exercise that's on our knees. So if you want something like a pillow or a mat that you can fold under, just make sure you're all set for that for when we get there. The way it's gonna work is we have five moves. We're gonna work them for 60 seconds a piece, 10 seconds of transition between all five, and then we'll get a nice solid reset and we'll do it two more times, so three total. Raiders, I could talk to you all day. You're such good listeners, but what do you say? We lift and carry that bucket. Aroo! All right, team, so that first exercise today is literally all about getting the bucket off the floor. We are doing up and over. So we're gonna take a slight hinge in our hips, loading through the glutes, holding through those dumbbells. So setting up in sort of like our deadlift position, like an RDL, from here, I'm gonna lower, activating through my quads. I'm gonna squeeze up through my butt, bringing the weights to my shoulders, pushing overhead. So a little faster, it's gonna be load the quads, squeeze the butt, up and over. So as I come out with my glutes firing, I'm gonna use the activation of my glutes to transfer the bells to my shoulders. So it's kind of like a little kettlebell swing. If that feels like you're putting a ton of strain in your lower back, we don't want it there at all, Use that core, you can slow it down. Hinge, squeeze, curl to press. It's gonna be a perfect place to start today. All right, team, this is also floor to ceilings. All sorts of things. Feet on those train tracks, three, two. Hinge the hips, load the quads, squeeze the butt, and press it overhead. So we're looking at activating through the glutes. I push through my quads, pressing through all four corners of my foot. I squeeze my butt forward, core is active. Bells rack on my shoulder pressing overhead, making sure that as I go for that press, that I'm super duper engaged in my belly button, that the bottom of my rib cage is pushing back and engaging belly button spine, so that as I'm overhead, I'm not offloading in my spine at all. Again, if you need to slow it down, let's go hinge, squeeze the standing, curl to the shoulders, push overhead, so it doesn't necessarily have the explosive nature, but you're still working from hinging, picking it up, lifting, and then strengthening through your shoulders. Whatever you need to do, it is perfect. You are activating through those muscles where you're at today, and I promise you with time that power comes. Here's four, three, two, 10 seconds. If you have a heavier set of dumbbells, now is the time to get it. We are going into farmer's carries. So grabbing your dumbbell shoulders down the back. Here's three, two, and once we have them, we're just gonna walk. So this one seems like it's not a lot until we are 30 to 60 seconds in, especially if we're going heavier weights. So really making sure that that core is engaged, that our shoulders are engaged. If you don't have a ton of space and don't want to walk the edge of your mat, you can go ahead and take marches. But we're working on grip strength. So we're gripping through those weights. Nice, strong hands. Nicely done, team. Noticing if we're starting to shoulders and ears, letting them fall down the back. Noticing if we're feeling in that low back, we're scooping through that tailbone. So not only are we getting grip, we're getting core, we're getting a great opportunity to practice that postural alignment, which is huge, especially when we've got tons of weight. You never want to feel in the low back. All right, team, we are here for eight. Keep squeezing. If you have lighter weights going off the intensity, just need to squeeze it as hard as you can the entire time. Two, all right, team, we have muscle makers. We're gonna drop the weights, jump or step back, push up, renegade row, pop it up to overhead. All right, let's try it together. Squat, step or jump back, little burpee, gotcha. Chest to deck, squeeze the butt, we can keep the legs on the floor, we're gonna row one, row two, step or half back up, squeezing it through that curl, pressing to overhead. So again, if you need to slow it down, you step it. We drop to the knees as we hit our push up. We might stay on the knees for our row, keeping our torso nice and stable. We walk it up through the squat, 
squeeze, curl, to press. So you can see here that we're starting to fatigue through a lot of those same muscle patterns, really getting that fire from that floor to overhead. Beautiful team. If your shoulders are starting to get really tired, you can go ahead and take the curl to press out and just work on the burpee into that renegade row. Here is your five. Here's your four, three, two, hot dog. And here's the deal. I hope those shoulders are tired because we're gonna tire them out even more. We did the farmer's carry, now we go overhead carry. Three, two, and. So probably by this point, we've done two moves that have gotten those weights over our head. Again, if you don't have a ton of space here, you can march it from the floor. But let's talk about the shape of this body. Wow, mine are already starting to feel great. So biceps are right here. My shoulders are down the back. I wanna make sure that I'm not jutting my belly out and my butt back. I'm scooping my tailbone under, pulling my rib cage in. Making sure my shoulders are out of the ears and they're not lifting up my lats arm gate, my back muscles. I'm trying to get as long through my arms as I can. This one is intense. If those dumbbells start to feel unavailable, you can drop one and just hold one dumbbell between the two hands. You can do this one body weight. A lot of us don't stand with our hands overhead. So 60 seconds of just holding our arms up, you will start to feel it. Keep that tummy tight. Oh yeah, team. Woo! Here's your four. Your three, two, lower the weight, come on down to the knees. This is where I was saying if you have a pillow or want to fold your mat. So wrapping the weight on your shoulders, you're gonna step out forward into a low squat, hold, step it back in three, two. All right, step it out, low squat, hold, making sure that our weight is in our heels, in our butt and in our quads and never, ever, ever in our knees. If this does not feel good on your body for whatever reason, you have the option to squat, Hold, squat, hold. If the weights are too much, cause yeah, this is intense, we're essentially doing a single leg squat. You can go ahead and just keep the hands at the heart and really work on nailing that form, especially in this first round. If you have a pillow too, like I said, you can pop that puppy under your knees and then you'll step in front of the pillow, step behind the pillow. I'll probably use this one for my next round because this floor is hard. Tummy is tight, eyes up, chest up, making sure that as you stand, those feet are straight forward. Core is tight, here's 10. You can also drop it into one dumbbell, just like we did with the overhead, holding it in that bow tie position at the heart. Here's three, two, tie. Set that pillow aside, team, that was beautiful. We are doing this two more times, starting with our ground to overhead. You may be thinking, wow, this feels like a lot of work to carry a bucket. And I'll tell you what, I almost always forget how challenging the bucket carry is until I'm picking up the bucket. All right, team, so as a reminder, two options here, hinging at the hips, powering through the butt, big squeeze through the butt, up and over, core is tight, or hinge, squeeze the sand, curl to press in three. You got this, two, and hips back. Again, if we are opting for the power move, if we've worked up, if we really have nailed our hinge, we have a perfect deadlift, we have a perfect shape, we feel it in our hands, in our butt, never in our low back, and we're working that power, we wanna remember that, especially if we start to fatigue, we are using that booty as our driver. So if you start to notice that your chest is coming up before your butt, or if you start to notice any sensation in the small of your back, Slow it down, right? That means that we're not activating through our core, so we're not getting as tight as we need to be in our core. It also means that we're starting to let go of our tushy. So instead of using that butt to drive it up, we're probably not quite activating that. So we're really just squeezing the glutes. I want you to feel that cheek squeeze. Three, here's two. And maybe we set the weights down, give our hands a break, maybe we don't. Maybe we grab those heavier weights, we have those farmer's carries. Shoulders back, here's three, boom, two, and. So again, if you have but this one set of dumbbells to perform with, and it's not quite heavy enough, you didn't really feel it last time, I want you to think of squeezing harder. I want you to squeeze so hard that it feels like your hand might start cramping. 
you just have to cram shake it out and watch you cram bake. But I want you to squeeze like you're trying to break the weight. You break the weight, take a picture, because that is bad ass. But here's what's gonna happen. We are working grip, like I said, so when we don't necessarily have the weight, like these are a third of the weight that I normally do my farmer's carries with at this point in my life. If I just kind of rock, walk in this, I won't feel much, but the second I actively squeeze, and I'm talking like, that's something that's super satisfying to squeeze. Like a stress ball. I'm squeezing that stress ball or a balloon full of sand. If you're squeezing those, that feels great. I'm gonna squeeze as hard as I can, and now, just 10 seconds in, I'm feeling that grip starts to strengthen. Three, two, and let's set it down, shake it out, before going into our muscle makers. We jump back into our burpee, push up, renegade row, pop it up, overhead in three, two, travel to that beautiful burpee, chest to death, feet are wide so that as you row, your hips do not move. Pop it through that squat, squeezing the butt up and over. Modification, not modification, slowing it down, stepping it back, dropping the knees, chest to death, stay on the knees or take the knees off the floor for your row, stepping it up into your squat position, drop the butt to stand up, curl to overhead. We've been doing a ton of overhead, so if you need to, do not punish yourself for taking that overhead out. We're gonna get a ton of work, just working the bottom half of this. So hitting that push up, hitting that running in row, popping it back up. That is an awesome option, because again, this one is for cardio, but it's also starting to condition getting your body off the floor with some weight. Here we go, team five. Here's four. Here's three, two. Set those weights down one more time. Maybe stretch the hands, shake it out. We're going overhead carries. One weight, no weights. We're going in three, two, up and over. So just to give you a little insight, into training with these. Remember how I said this weight is about one third of what I do my farmer's carry with? This weight is pretty much exactly what I do my overhead with. Once in a while I might go two pounds heavier, but this is enough. This carry is so heavy. We're using a ton of not just shoulder strength, but shoulder mobility. We're really staying engaged through the lats. <sighs> Keeping that tummy tight. This one is no joke at all. Again, if you need to modify, drop it to one weight, hold it by the balls. And again, that beautiful option just to do no weights and keep those arms overhead in perfect position. For some of us, this range of motion isn't quite there yet. That's A-OK. -okay. One of the best ways to start finding this range of motion is by practicing things like overhead presses and overhead carries. So strong, team. Shoulders out of the back. Squeeze that butt. Here's three. Here's two. Yowza. This one is fire. Coming down to our knees, dumbbells or no, we're going into that low lunge step up or squat step up in three, two. So I step my foot straight forward like it's on a pair of train tracks. I hinge to load my weight into my heel, squeezing through my butt to come up from here. Hips are back, heels have my weight and I'm squeezing through my butt like crazy. I also wanna make sure that I'm going eyes up, chest up. Hello, if you're facing your screen, and you realize that you're not facing me, you're facing the floor, can I see your beautiful eyes, please? That's just gonna ensure that we're keeping it in the legs, whereas the second we start, I'm gonna put these on to show. The second we start to drop through the chest, we start to offload our legs, and it goes back in our glutes. So it's super duper important. Those eyes are up. And if you're having trouble with eyes up, drop the weight. This is another one where, holy cow, if you're going body weight, you're doing just fine. Also that option to stand, squat hold to stand, squat hold. This one is no joke team, listen to your body, there is no easy option. Here's three, two, set it to the side. That's kind of what I love about this day. There's tons of variations for each of these and none of them are easy. Oh my gosh, but speaking of easy, breezy, beautiful, what do you say we do one more round, huh? Starting with our floor to ceiling, giving ourselves whatever permission we need to meet ourselves where we're at and make this Finish, not just our strongest finish, but our best. And our best means perfect form, breathing, targeting the muscles we're aiming to target. So intentional movements. Team, we are going in five, four, three, two. Let's finish this puppy up. Hinge, big squeeze up and over. Again, maybe slow down, hinge, come to standing, 
curl and press. One of the nice things that that breaking it down targets is it really gives us an opportunity to engage with our core and our butt. Sometimes when we are doing all the overhead stuff, we get lost in the fact that things are moving so fast. Versus this, coming up strong first, we don't have any upper body business going on, so we can really make sure the butt is tight, the core is tight, we're not in the lower back. And again, as always, I promise, when we are willing to set that ego aside, meeting our body where we are physically best, most capable of meeting it, it allows our body to build a super, super strong foundation, which not only means that we're putting the work where it belongs, but it means that we're gonna be able to get stronger in a much more sustainable and long lasting way. Here's three, two, we're going into farmer's carries. If you don't have another set of weights, I challenge you to hold on. Remember, we're either squeezing or going up size. Here's three, two, shoulders back. Can I see that big squeeze in the hands? So strong team. Grip strength is one of the most underrated training things, really in any style of training. So often when I was working at the gym, I would see these huge dudes come out and lift just crazy amounts of, on their deadlift, but they'd have to strap their body in. Versus when I would see people lifting heavy weights, pretty similar to what they were lifting with no straps, and I would ask them, how are you able to hold your barbell without straps when all these other guys aren't? And they would tell me that it took them a little bit longer but they trained that progressive overload. So they never used straps. They would only lift as heavy as their grip could handle. And then they would train grip on the outside so that their hands were getting stronger along with their legs. And there's a ton of fun science that goes along with grip strength actually being indicative of longer life. And let it go, and better life expectancy. Pretty fun stuff. All right, I talked your ear off. Now we're gonna do some muscle makers. In three, popping it back into your push-up. Two. Here we go. Push up. Squeeze that core like you mean it. No rocking through the hips. Optional up and over. It's your third round. You've done a ton of up and over, so if you skip it, you're not missing anything. Slowing it down. It's like dropping the hips. Big intentional walking it back. You drop to the knees. On the knees, maybe. Maybe we bring it back up. Then as we drop to our squat, butt stays low. Remember, eyes up, chest up. Into that overhead. Team, whatever you are doing, I want your goal here to be trying to do some sort of movement for the next 25 seconds. It doesn't matter if you're walking it. It doesn't matter if you're jumping it. I don't care if you stand up and just do a little dance party for the next 15 seconds. This is about getting your heart rate up, which means continual movement is the name of the game, whatever that looks like. Here's eight. Celebrate with me here. Five, four, to the end, three, Two, let's set those weights down. Shake out the hands, a little interlace. One more of our favorites. Up and over, here's three, two. All right, team. Starting to notice. Like I said, this one is a huge with range of motion. So if you're feeling like you're starting to cramp in your neck, if you're feeling like you're starting to cramp in your shoulder, if you feel like you're feeling it in your low back, I want you to drop those weights, and I want you to go overhead, practicing how straight you can get the arms and the shoulders down the back, the chest pulled in, and the glutes tucked forward. And I promise you, this is gonna start lighting up those arms with or without weight. Just like we were talking about foundation on the ground to overhead, it is so deeply important that we train these in a way where we don't feel injured or triggered. And on our third round, especially with all this overhead, it's especially important that we switch to listen to our body. Core is tight. Third team, we can walk it, we can march it. We can stay in place and just shake our hips if it doesn't move our shoulders. Here's three, two. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Raiders, Aru. One more round. We are finding that kneel in two, one. And weights are up. Remember, find those train tracks. Hips are low, eyes are up. If you're looking at your screen, hello, keep your eyes on me, please. Notice, because I forgot to mention this, if you're alternating your feet. If you haven't been alternating your feet, let's go ahead and uh, do that. Just real fast at the top, let's talk about that alternate two if you're starting to fatigue. You don't want to feel this in the knee or the low back, so we can stand, squat, hold, push it back up. 
squat hold. Push it back up. The important thing is we are working this isometric. And then if you're upward from the ground, we're working that single leg power and stability, right? Because as we lower gently to the floor, we are technically balancing on one foot. Team, 15 seconds. You're not only done with my favorite exercise of the day, but you're done with the full workout. Stay with me, team. Here's five, four, three, two. Shake it out. Go ahead and connect the hands in front of the chest. We'll circle slow through the wrist and other direction. Hang 10, shake it out here. Thank you, Siri. And let's go two shoulder rolls in the back. And let's go two to the front. Oh yeah, and let's just finish with a little neck curl. So super gentle, slow as can be, two in each direction. Team, congratulations. Like I said, if you've never done the bucket carry, switch directions. I very much look forward to experiencing it for yourself. And hopefully, by working this workout into your programming once or twice a month, come on out of it, it's a piece of cake. So Raiders, congratulations for showing up for yourselves and your races today. I am so proud of you. I will see you on the course. But first, we train. Aroo!